Hey, what's up guys? So we're checking out another Star Wars reaction video for your new channel. Welcome. This one is called Every Single Separatist Droid Starfighter Type Slash Variant Explained. Now, when it comes to Separatist Droid um, Starfighters, the only ones I know are um, Vulture Droids, uh, the Hyena Bombers, and um, the Tri uh, Fighters. You know, uh, I don't know if I said those correctly. And I don't know if this qualifies. Um, Buzz Droids? I don't know if that counts as a separatist uh, fighter, but either way, those are like the only three-ish uh, I know. But if there's more, then we're about to find out. So without anything else, let's just jump into it. Jumping into space combat against clone pilots and assisting in the transportation of the separatist droid army to target planets, the Confederacy of Independent Systems Navy was made up of several units. Today, we're going over them all as we dive into the Navy of yet another Star Wars faction. This is every single separatist droid starfighter explained. All right, let's see what he's got. Vulture droid. Forming the backbone of the Separatist Navy, the Variable Geometry Self-Propelled Battle Droid Mark I was commonly known as the Vulture Droid. The unmanned model of Droid Starfighter was manufactured by the Howard Chall Engineering Corporation and was first utilized by the Trade Federation and later the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Because the Vulture Droid didn't rely on a pilot, it was capable of extreme maneuvers that could crush even the sturdiest organic body. That said, Vultures lacked the resources resourcefulness and intelligence that living pilots brought into combat. Still, they were lethal in large numbers and excelled in both atmospheric and space combat. The Vulture Pros and cons. systems consisted of four blaster cannons with two per wing. In addition, the droid possessed two energy torpedo launchers and were also able to fire buzz droid discord missiles instead of energy torpedoes. Well, we saw that in episode three. Droids could transform into a walking mode to patrol the surface of ships or provide support during battles, communicating with each other by chattering. A vulture droid cost 40,000 credits and measured 6.96 meters long. 40,000 each? A vulture droid variant appeared in Star Wars Forces of Destiny, armed with a large ion weapon. There was also an advanced vulture droid fighter, the successor to the vulture droid, that possessed greatly enhanced firepower. It appeared in the 2001 video game Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds alongside the light droid Starfighter, a precursor Never played to that game. the Vulture Droid. Hyena Bomber. Essentially there we go. the TIE Bomber to the TIE Fighter, but Vulture Droids. The Hyena class bomber was manufactured by Bactoid Armor Workshop. They were designed for heavy ordnance bombing runs. Based on the Vulture Droid design, Hyena Bombers had wider and sturdier hulls with huge wings to gain stability during flight. Like Vulture Droids, they could transform into a walking mode. The space that would usually be taken up by a pilot was instead used to carry a hefty armament of ordnance, including light laser cannons, proton torpedoes, concussion missiles, and proton bombs. One of the Hyena Bomber's greatest strengths was its versatility. The bomber was slower and less maneuverable than a Vulture Droid, but it was still light enough to perform the role of a starfighter rather than a bomber, if required, working alongside vulture droids. Tri -droid. Wow. There you go. Yeah, tri -droids. To engage and excel in heavy dogfighting, the tri fighter was created with a sole purpose in mind, total destruction of their adversary. A spacefaring relative of the Trade Federation's dreaded droidica, the tri fighter featured more advanced brains than standard separatist droid ships, which made it harder for an enemy to predict the fighter's movements and tactics. A unit was able to analyze, anticipate, and mimic an opponent's attack. Compact and heavily armed, the Tri Fighter possessed four laser cannons and Discord missiles located on its bottom. One of the Tri Fighter's main weapons, the nose tip laser cannon, was at the front of the fighter near its photoreceptors and port sensors. The Droid Starfighter also had a payload of proton torpedoes, buzz droids, and concussion missiles. HMP Gunship. The heavy oh, missile how can I forget the gunship? gunship was technically a model of repulsor lift airspeeder. Operated by an advanced droid brain, they were one of the deadlier autonomous vehicles, heavily armed with missile pods and seven laser cannons. The HMP could carry heavy ordnance, perform close air support in combat zones, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the LAAT gunship. 
Droid gunships were also used to transport B-1 battle droids, B-2 super battle droids, and BX series droid commandos into battle by use of Rax. The precursor to the HMP was known as the Mechanized Assault Flyer. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Often flown by specially programmed IG-100 Magnaguards, the Rogue Class Porex oh, yeah, Starfighter this. was a bigger vessel with a bulbous cockpit. I didn't think this counted, to be honest. On both wings. The bounty hunter Cad Bane also flew a modified P-38, which he named Xanadu Blood, given to him as payment for a job by Darth Sidious. The P-38 oh, so that's where it came was from. How did I not put that together? Lockheed P-38 Lightning a World War II fighter aircraft with which it shares a great number of characteristics. The Rogue Class Porax 38 was originally created for Revenge of the Sith, but didn't make it into the movie. The Belbulab 22 Heavy Starfighter developed Grievous to fill a Starship. heavy attack role between the Vulture Droid and Hyena Droid Bomber. The Belbulab 22 Heavy Starfighter was comparable in both role and armament to the Republic Navy's ARC-170 Starfighter. It was the only Separatist fighter developed for a single organic pilot. Its armament consisted of a pair of triple tight laser cannons mounted in retractable pods, and while the fighter lacked ordnance, its cannons were more than adequate for anti-fighter and even light anti-ship work. General Grievous flew a customized Belbalab 22 named the Soulless One, nicknamed by his Republic opponents Soulless as one. the Spineless One. The Soulless One was reinforced with impervious alloy one. armor and was equipped with a sensor jamming system. Geonosian Starfighter, known officially as the Nantex class territorial right. defense starfighter, the Geonosian Starfighter was a needle shaped vessel with a laser cannon located between the prongs. And I was flew this starship a lot in uh, Battlefront on One, uh, Battlefront of One, the OG One, as well as in the vacuum of space. Its bubble cockpit afforded its single pilot a 180 degree field of view. Despite its relatively small engine, these ships were very fast, achieving 746 miles per hour in atmospheric flight. Like with the Vulture Droid, there was also a lesser known advanced Geonosian fighter, Nova Sword, a nimble, powerful craft that had numerous improvements this one I don't over know. the aging Z95 Headhunter. The Nova Sword was a capable and versatile craft that could act as an interceptor, scout, or even a light bomber. The Nova Sword was utilized by the CIS's ace starfighter pilots, while others typically preferred to operate personalized fighters. Umbaran Starfighter The Xenoas 33 Umbaran Does that really Starfighter count? was a uniquely powerful and capable ship used by the Umbaran militia. Its space frame had variable geometry, and in normal flight, it had a roughly triangular shape. The unique space frame allowed the Starfighter to stand on its wingtips or be stored in racks around the walls in hangars. It did not have a typical fighter cockpit. Instead, the pilot sat in a ray-shielded command chair surrounded by touch-sensitive holographic controls and displays. The controls utilized hand gestures that were very sensitive. Armed with chin-mounted electromagnetic plasma cannons and wing-mounted missile pods, the Umbaran Starfighter packed a tremendous punch. Tempest Zero, an elite Starfighter prototype, the Tempest Zero was I don't utilized know this by Tofin's Raiders, a group of ace pilots who served in the Separatist Navy. They appeared in Fantasy Flight Games' series of Star Wars role-playing products. Solar Sailor, Count Dooku's personal ship, yep. the Panwarka 116-class interstellar sloop, better known as the Genosian Solar Sailor, was a personal yacht gifted to him by Archduke Poggle the Lesser. His particular vessel was heavily modified, propelled by a unique solar sail using ancient technology, allowing Dooku to enter and exit Coruscant undetected. The seed-shaped vessel bore a resemblance to the smaller Geonosian starfighter, though the sloop had room inside for two pilots, a bunk, and cargo space, and believe it or not, was actually unarmed. Geonosian Fanblade Officially called oh, yeah, the Ventress's class Fanblade Starfighter, the Fanblade was flown by a Saj Ventress. I saw this in Clone Wars. Based on Count Dooku's ship, the Fanblade was equipped with a solar sail, which granted it greater speed and shielding at the cost of allowing other ship sensors to more easily detect the fighter. The sail could be folded inward for when the craft was in flight or landing. At each tip of the solar sail was a laser cannon, which would rotate to face forward when the sail was retracted. Techno Union Fighter 
The MiG-VIM-814 Interceptor, better known as the Techno Union Fighter, was designed on Utapau to defend the Separatists' foothold during the waning days of the Clone Wars. Because of this versatile role, it because yeah, it had to be constructed one. from whatever materials happened to be present on the world, the MiG-VIM was extremely lightweight. It was constructed from a thin frame that made it very vulnerable to enemy fire, but fast in combat, and its interior systems were designed to be as simplistic as possible. Scarab-class Starfighter A Trade Federation predecessor to Don't know the this one either. the Scarab-class Starfighter had a flat body and two outrigger wings, which would lock down against the body while in normal flight mode and spring open to achieve fire capability and maximum maneuverability for combat. Hunter Seeker Droid An unusual droid employed by the Trade Federation as a defensive unit, the Hunter Seeker Droid this one. was essentially a giant droidica ship. They were most often deployed in space in their wheel form, concealing their weapons. There they would float until the enemy approached, at which point they unfolded into attack positions. Though very Bro, they look like a flying groups, serpent. Hunter Seeker droids could be taken out by a single blast from a normal Starfighter laser cannon. Trade Federation Bomber A clear precursor to the Hyena Bomber, the Trade Federation droid bomber was Don't armed know. with four laser cannons and a high capacity bomb bay. Although well-armored and shielded, it was slow and lacked maneuverability. But that about does it when it comes to the Navy of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. The common and more obscure. Which droid starfighter is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server. Alright, so there you guys have it. So that is every single Separatist droid starfighter type slash variant explained. I only got three of them out of all that but i didn't know that some of them would actually count because when it said separatist droid starfighter i thought it meant those were uh those that were actually only droids like vulture droids hyena bombers and uh tri fighters because they were actually droids they didn't require a pilot they were uh sentient i guess you could say like uh they were the own uh they were their own creation they don't need like a pilot or anything like that so that's why i thought only those counted but either way, this was a great video. About like 80% of it, I did not know. <laughs> but it was still a great video. So shout out goes, shout out and credit goes to Red5. I can't believe I did not give him credit at the beginning of this video. So Red5, if you're watching this, I do apologize. But shout out and credit goes to Red5 as always. I do believe he put another video on his channel recently. So I got to list that too. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And by the way, my uh, favorite droid, I would say would have to be... Um, I would actually go with the one uh, with the Magna Guard. The Magna Guard one uh, where Cad Bane has the ship, the Xandu Blood, modified or designed after because I really like Cad Bane. <laughs> so that's why I would choose that ship. So put it in the comments below which ship is your favorite. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another video. And thank you so much for your support, guys. I really do appreciate it. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.